Formation of the Solar System 101. Today, we will introduce a brief space history, describe the major features of our solar system, including how they formed, and speculate on the impending death of our planet, Earth. My name is Chris, and welcome to Science Talk TV. Our story begins in an incomprehensibly small part of the universe. And the universe is so vast that the number of stars it contains could be likened to the number of grains of sand on all of Earth. Our sun is one of those grains of sand in a teeny corner of the Milky Way galaxy. There are about 125 billion galaxies in the observable universe each containing some 200 billion stars. Our star, the Sun, doesn't even exist yet. 4.6 billion years ago, the matter of our solar system was a loose cloud of rotating dust and gas. This molecular cloud was 75 light years across and not dense enough to collapse in upon itself. Suddenly, a nearby dying star likely 12 times larger than our sun, exploded into a supernova. The shock waves disturbed our molecular cloud, and then the dust and gas started to clump together into objects the size of pebbles at first. Gravity began to contract the cloud into a quickly spinning disk called the solar nebula. As the solar nebular disk continued to contract, Gravity got stronger and stronger, and rotation became faster and faster. After 50 million years, 99.8% of the mass in our solar nebula became concentrated in the center, and we call this dense sphere of matter a protostar. Suddenly, the immense gravity and heat in this protostar sparked a fusion reaction, and our sun was born. This fusion reaction ignited some 4.5 billion years ago, and it is still burning today. It runs on hydrogen, which comprises about 75% of the sun. So this was the birth of the solar system, but we still didn't have any planets. What we had at this time was 99.8% of the solar system's matter burning in the sun, and another 0.2% of the matter orbiting the sun. How did the planets form? Slowly, this leftover matter concentrated into belts at different orbital distances away from the sun. And over time, the matter in these distinct belts collected into single large protoplanets by gravity. This process is called accretion, and it starts with just small pieces of dust collecting into pebbles then into boulders, and then into huge objects called planetesimals. As the planetesimals collided, they generated heat by friction and became molten. When the matter came back together, it now had enough gravity and was liquid enough to form into a sphere. Accretion is still slowly happening today. The planets grow larger every day as they collect asteroids and comets. What are the other major features of our solar system, and how did they come to be? 1. The terrestrial planets – Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. These rocky planets were formed by accretion, as almost all of the solid matter in their orbital distances ended up collecting together. If conditions were correct, sometimes a planetesimal would not collide, but would fall into orbit around the planet itself, becoming a moon. Billions of years ago, the terrestrial planets were too close to the sun and too hot to hang on to gases. The Earth's atmosphere today actually came from inside the Earth after it cooled by processes like volcanic eruptions and steam venting. 2. The gas giants – Jupiter and Saturn the gas giants also formed by accretion. They collected some rocks and a lot of the gas at their orbital distances. The difference is that these gas planets were far enough away from the sun to be cool, yet large enough to hang on to gases. Jupiter's gravity is 2.4 times stronger than Earth's, 
And Jupiter has a surface temperature around negative 145 degrees Celsius. The gas giants are comprised mostly of hydrogen and helium, just like the sun, but they are not nearly dense enough to have ignited a fusion reaction. Three, the ice giants, Uranus and Neptune. These outermost planets were again formed by accretion, but their distance from the sun allowed icy planetesimals to join before being vaporized. The ice giants have a rocky, icy core and a methane atmosphere. The methane gas absorbs red light and reflects blue light, and that's why these planets look blue. So hopefully that explains how the solar system formed. The sun and all of the planets formed at about the same time, 4.5 billion years ago. The planets are spinning and orbiting in the same direction. Planets like Earth have seasons because one or several planetesimals impacted them long ago from various angles. An impact strong enough to knock the Earth's spin axis 23.5 degrees off center would have been absolutely catastrophic to life on Earth. It must have happened early in Earth's creation, likely when it was still a protoplanet. There are three more non-planet objects in our solar system that I want to discuss. Four, the asteroid belt. Today, between Mars and Jupiter is an asteroid belt. These asteroids should have formed into their own planet, but they were unable to. The gravity of Jupiter and the Sun kept pulling the asteroids apart after they collided. They could not accrete like all of the other planets did because of this disturbance. 5. The Kuiper Belt Beyond Neptune is another asteroid belt, but these are mostly icy objects. They can't form into planets as well because Neptune's gravity keeps stirring them up. The Kuiper Belt would be a good place for future space colonies to mine water. 6. Pluto Pluto was discovered in 1930 and was considered the ninth planet, but by 2005, astronomers had discovered over 10 more new Kuiper Belt objects of a similar size to Pluto. One was even bigger than Pluto. So instead of adding 10 or 15 new planets, it was just easier to cut down to eight planets while adding Pluto to the list of Kuiper Belt objects. Now we know how the solar system formed and that its main components today are the sun, terrestrial planets like Earth, the asteroid belt, gas giants like Jupiter, ice giants like Neptune, and the icy Kuiper Belt objects. What does the future hold for our solar system? The solar system was created relatively quickly 4.5 billion years ago, but in another 5 billion years, Earth will likely be gone. The sun's fusion reaction that sparked 4.6 billion years ago is eventually going to run out of hydrogen fuel. It will then start burning helium and expand into a red giant. In about 7.5 billion years, Earth will burn up and fall into the sun and then the sun will collapse into a white dwarf. 15 billion years later, dark energy will likely rip the universe apart into a heat death of infinite expansion. Hopefully this made sense and you learned something about the formation of our solar system. Check back every week for a new video about 101 science education, 10 cool animal facts, or a live science news video. Thank you for watching Science Talk TV.